Greetings to one and all. I am Dr. Akanksha Sharma and this is my first attempt at simplifying some basic dermatology concepts for you. So the first topic that we'll be starting is the structure of skin. So it is a very basic and easy topic, however, a very important topic for you. So the structure of skin, it is the largest organ of the human body and it has three parts, the epidermis, the dermis and the hypodermis. Now this is how all these layers are arranged. First is the epidermis. So epidermis will be the outermost layer. It shall be the outermost layer and it contains stratified squamous cells. So it is the outermost layer and it contains the stratified squamous cells. Then we have the dermoepidermal junction. So what is the dermoepidermal junction? It is a junction between the epidermis and the dermis. Uh, so uh, the cells of the epidermis will be resting on the dermoepidermal junction. Then we have the dermis. So dermis mainly contains the connective tissue. So what all will be present in the dermis? It will have collagen. It will have collagen. It will have elastin. And these will be present in a background of glycosaminoglycans. So collagen will be present. Elastin will be present in a background of glycosaminoglycans. Then we have the hypodermis which will contain the subcutaneous fat and it will finally be resting on the striated muscles. Now the epidermis. So the epidermis has four layers from above to below or we should say from the outermost to the innermost. So these are the four layers. What are the four layers? The stratum corneum, stratum granulosum, stratum spinosum and stratum basal or germinativum so the stratum spinosum and stratum basal are together known as the malpighian layer now why the name germinativum so the name germinativum because the keratinocyte the basal keratinocyte that is the keratinocyte that is present in the stratum basal uh, it moves upwards so what i mean to say is that this is the basal layer these are the keratinocytes and they shall get differentiated and they shall move upwards so they are differentiated they will be differentiated they shall move upwards so this differentiation and there is so we can easily see that the basal keratinocyte is going upwards and uh, the transit time transit time is the time taken by the basal keratinocyte to reach the stratum corneum so the transit time for a normal human body is 28 days, 28 to 30 days. Now in certain diseases like psoriasis, the transit time may be decreased. So it is decreased in certain diseases like psoriasis. It may be up to as less as 5 days. Now we have the cells of the epidermis. So we have the keratinocyte, which is more than 95% of all cells is the keratinocyte. So it, we can say it is the basic building block. Then we have melanocytes. Melanocytes will contain melanin and this will help in the color of the skin. Uh, Langerhan cells. The Langerhan cells will be for the immunity and the Merkel cells, which are receptors. So these are the four cells and the main cells are the keratinocytes. So we'll start with stratum basal now. That was the basal layer. So we are starting from the inside now. So the stratum basal is one cell layer thick. So you can see this is the stratum basal. And uh, over the DEJ, I have made one layer thick. It is just one cell layer thick. It can be two to three cell layers thick in glabrous or hyperproliferative skin. Glabrous skin means there is no hair. The skin that has no hair like our palms and soles. So these are small cuboidal cells with dark staining nuclei and dense cytoplasm. And they will have vacuoles which will contain pigmented melanosomes. So what happens is that a melanocyte, the melanocyte contains the melanosomes. And these melanosomes get transported to the keratinocyte. These shall be transported to the keratinocyte. So this is what happens and one melanosome can transport melanin to up to 36 keratinocytes. So this is the basal layer. So remember over the DEJ rests the basal layer. It will have a, a 
dark staining nuclei and a dense cytoplasm. Next, we have the stratum spinosum. So, stratum spinosum is 8 to 10 layers thick. So, it is a thick layer. And uh, the name spinosum. Now, why spinosum? It is also known as the prickly layer. Prickly. Due to the presence of desmosomes. Now, what are these desmosomes? So, desmosomes are the major adhesion complex in epidermis. So, you can see these are the basal cells. This is the DEJ. This is the stratum basale. And this is the stratum spinosum. Now, we can see this is the stratum spinosum and it has some projections. It has some spine-like cell margins. So, when we see a histological slide, we see spine-like margins of the cells. That is why the name stratum spinosum. So, what is a desmosome? It is the major adhesion complex in the epidermis. Desmosome will help in the adhesion of two keratinocytes with each other. So, we have two keratinocytes which are lying side by side to each other. And they shall be joined by a desmosome. Now, desmosome is only the mechanical coupler. So, that means that only the structural integrity will be provided by the desmosome. And if we want the functional integrity or the physiological coupling, then we need the gap junction. So, there are two, two things that are present. The desmosome and the gap junction. The desmosome uh, enables mechanical coupling and the gap junction enables physiological coupling. So this is very important. We need to differentiate between them. Then we have the third layer. You know, from inside, we are going from inside to outside. So we have reached the third layer now. Stratum granulosum. It is 2 to 5 cells thick. So, and it is known as granulosum. Now, why is it known as granulosum? You can see that all the names have their own reasons why they are named so. Basal because it was the basal cell layer. Then we had spinosum due to presence of desmosomes. Now obviously it is named granulosum. So there is a reason why it is named granulosum. It is due to the presence of certain granules. No, now what are these granules that are present? So there are two types of granules that are present. The keratohyaline granules and the ordland bodies. Now what are these? We have the keratohyaline granules. So, these are particles of irregular size and they will contain fill acrin. Now, we will simplify the name further. Fill acrin. So, we'll just break it down into filament aggregating protein. Now, the significance of this protein will be studied later. But just to remember that we have keratohyaline granules which will have fill acrin. And we have the Odland bodies. Now, what are these Odland bodies? So, these are small lamellar granules, which are also known as membrane coating granules. Now, why are they known as membrane coating granules? The reason for this is that they discharge lipid component into intercellular space. Let us take a look. So, uh, here we have the Odland bodies. This is the Odland body. The Odland bodies are discharging a substance into the intercellular space. The space between two keratinocytes contains some substance. It contains some lipid component. So, what this can be the, this can be called the intercellular cement. This is called the intercellular cement. So, there are two functions of this. First of all, it acts as a barrier. It has a barrier function. And the second is the intercellular cohesion. So, it helps in the sticking of two cells. And we have the keratohyaline granules. Now let us revise again. This was the dermoepidermal junction. This is the stratum basal. Single celled. Then we have stratum spinosum. Stratum spinosum with the presence of desmosomes. Desmosomes here. And now we have the stratum granulosum with two types of bodies. The odlin body and the keratohyaline granules. Now you'll see that I've made the keratohyaline granules in the upper layers. So always remember that keratohyaline granules are present towards the upper layers. The upper layers. Now finally we have the stratum corneum. So what is stratum corneum? It is the uppermost or the outermost layer. 20 to 25 layers of cells and there will be presence of corneocytes. Corneocytes shall be the largest cell in the epidermis. 
So we can see that there have been certain changes as we moved from being a keratinocyte to being a corneocyte. You know, the cells changed their morphology. So what happened as the cell moved from being a keratinocyte to a corneocyte? What changes happened? We had seen that a basal keratinocyte was a cuboidal cell. It had a dark stained nuclei and cytoplasmic organelles were present. We remember that vacuoles were present that contained melanosomes. So we rem remember all these. Now what happened when it became a corneocyte? Certain changes occurred. The cuboidal cell became flat. It flattened itself. The dark stained nuclei was lost completely. The corneocytes lack nuclei. They do not have a nuclei. And finally, there are no cytoplasmic organelles. Now we have a question that how did this morphological change occur? So why are the corneocytes flat? In short, the question is why are the corneocytes flat? Now we'll study the importance of fill agarin. So we have the keratin filaments. The keratin filaments are present inside the uh, keratinocyte. So we have this. This is the keratinocyte. Now keratinocyte has keratin filaments. Under the influence of fill agarin, that is the filament aggregating protein, disulfide cross-linked macrofibers are formed. So these disulfide cross-linked macrofibers are responsible for the these are responsible for the flattening of keratinocyte. So finally the keratinocyte was flattened and it formed a corneocyte. So this is how a corneocyte is formed. And filaggrin has another function. It is broken down into amino acids and it acts as a moisturizing factor. So a loss of function mutation of filaggrin will result in two things. Number one is ichthyosis vulgaris and it is a risk factor for allergies also. A risk factor for allergies because the, there will not be the formation of flattened cells. Flattened cells will not be formed and this will lead to it is acting as a risk factor. And ichthyosis vulgaris because there will be no moisturization of the skin. No moisturization which will lead to a dry scaly skin. Dry scaly skin. So this is the clinical importance of fill agarin. So finally, there is a fifth layer that we haven't discussed yet. It is the stratum lucidum and it is not present everywhere. It is only present in the palmoplantar skin. That is the palms and the soles. And it is found between the stratum corneum and granulosum. So somewhere here you will find your Somewhere here you will find your stratum lucidum. But it is not always present. So, and these are nucleated transitional cells. And uh, it is an electron lucent layer and that is why it is known as stratum lucidum. So now finally, this is the final diagram that we have made and uh, consolidated picture. All the layers present here. So let's revise again. So this is the dermoepidermal junction. Then the stratum basale, single layered, uh, it is single layered with the presence of a dark staining nuclei and a dense cytoplasm. Now the cells will start to change. They will enlarge a little. This is stratum spinosum. The cells are slightly enlarged here and there is presence of desmosomes. So desmosomes are the main reason. So I'm writing it here, desmosomes. Then we have the stratum granulosum with presence of two granules, the ortolan body, which will make the cement, the ortolan body. And as you can see, I've made keratohyaline granules here, keratohyaline granules, which will make filaggrin, which will cause the flattening of stratum corneum. That is why they are present in the upper layers. So keratohyaline granules and finally stratum corneum. Stratum corneum has no nuclei, no uh, organelles, cytoplasmic organelles. So this was the basic structure of the epidermis. So I thank you for listening to this and thank you for your patience and your feedback will be welcome.